Hi, and welcome to More Human, More Resources, the HR podcast for entrepreneurs. I'm Vicki Brown, your host and CEO of Vidomineo Enterprises. As a serial entrepreneur, I understand that having the right expert help has been critical to my success. That's why I'm dedicated to telling you, in plain language, what's going on in the world of HR that might impact your business and what you need to do about it with real actionable tips to help you master that list of must-dos and grow your leadership muscle. First things first, the information contained in this podcast is provided for general purposes only and is not to be considered legal advice. Your decision to adopt or not adopt any practice or procedure mentioned in this podcast is solely yours and we bear no responsibility for the outcome. We urge you to always consult legal counsel and other appropriate licensed professionals. And with that, let's get into the show. You're listening to Season 3, Episode 45. These days, hiring remote employees has almost become the norm. In fact, some companies don't even have a central office at all anymore, and others have taken advantage of the remote work bandwagon, and they see it as an opportunity to broaden the talent pool that's available to them. But hiring employees out of state, well, that comes with its own set of challenges. So in this episode, we're going to chat about the things you need to keep top of mind when you're expanding your operations. What, does that sound too lofty, expanding your operations? Well, take a deep breath, because that is exactly what you're doing. When you hire out of state, you're extending your business operations to that new state. And while that is fun to think about, It also means that you're doing business in that new state as well. Now, as we go through these tips, I'm going to focus on hiring a remote employee versus actually opening up a brick and mortar location in another state. But actually, in many ways, the list is similar. First up, you'll have to register as an employer in the new state. Each state is slightly different, but usually you can simply go to the employee department website for that state and they'll have instructions. Now, generally, you'll get an employer number. This number is different from your EIN or even your state business registration number. The employer number is used for things like unemployment and payroll taxes, etc. Now, sometimes the state will require an address in that state, so you'll have to put some thought around how you want to handle that. Do you want the employee's home address listed as your official business address with the state? I would think no, but then you'll have to come up with an alternative. Again, fortunately, this isn't a requirement for all states, so you'll have to read their website very carefully. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that when you register as an employer, you may be required to register as a business in that state as well, and that may trigger a business tax liability. I know it can feel a bit annoying, But when you hire out of state, you have to mentally get behind the fact that you are actually now doing business in that new state with all the attendant requirements. Next, check to see if there are any local or state licenses or permits required for your business. By the way, this is the reason it's always a good idea to check with your attorney and accountant before you plant your flag in a new state. Next, check to see if there are any local or state licenses or permits required for your business. By the way, this is the reason it's always a good idea to check with your attorney and accountant before you plant your flag in a new state. You'll also need to check with your brokers, both your business broker and your employee insurance broker. The first one will make sure your workers' compensation and other business policies are expanded to cover the new state. And depending on the location, you may have to buy a disability insurance policy as well. Not all states have state disability. Now, to be fair, not all states require that you have disability coverage for employees either. So again, double check. Your employee insurance broker will give you valuable information about your employee benefits policies. See, if you have an HMO only plan and there aren't any HMO locations in the new state, Well, that's going to need to be addressed, and that's where your broker comes in. She'll help you identify any gaps and offer solutions for you. Now on to the fun part. Okay, well, maybe not exactly fun. Payroll and payroll setup. Talk to your payroll provider or processor and notify them that you're going to have an employee in a new state. Now, here's a pro tip. 
it is never too early to do this notification. So often people wait until the person has started and they want to give them a paycheck to tell payroll or even human resources for that matter. But by then, you are way behind the eight ball. You see, setting up payroll taxes can be a multi-level process. They're setting up with the state, getting the proper ID numbers issued, which can take a minute, putting new codes in the payroll system, setting up the payroll tax payment process, and on and on. But when you wait, then everything gets behind. And most importantly, you end up missing the payroll tax filing because these things aren't set up yet. And then everyone has to go back and try to retroactively fix things. And believe me, the various state employment and tax offices aren't particularly nimble when it comes to retroactively fixing things. Then you end up with notices for failure to pay or late fees, and you have to try to unravel all that because actually the funds were held, but they weren't submitted to the state at the time because the tax payment process wasn't set up quite yet. Yada, yada, yada. The upshot, you'll get charge penalties for no good reason. So when you even think you might be adding someone in a new state, get the ball rolling right then and there. And last, but certainly not least, Familiarize yourself with the state and local employment laws. What's the minimum wage rate? When does overtime kick in? If you're a restaurant, how is tip pooling handled? Is it even a thing? Is there a specific frequency required for pay dates? What has to be on the pay stub? Is there any type of scheduling restrictions, things like fair scheduling laws? What about meal and rest break requirements? And what are the rules around time off? Is there mandatory sick time? What about paid family leave programs? How are other types of paid time off handled? Things like vacation or personal days. Well, okay, all that to say, yes, there are quite a number of things to think about. But on the other hand, hey, congratulations, you're growing. If you found this information helpful, please leave a review and tell a friend. Thanks for spending the time. Until next week, same time, same place.